Hi, uh, good evening everyone. So this week we'll be discussing a bit different concept in leprosy and uh, I decided to do this video because there have been few people who were asking to for me to discuss immunology of leprosy and I thought that it's a good idea to do it right now while we are discussing the anti-leprosy drugs. So it becomes a good, uh, good addition to the sequence of videos that uh, we have been doing. So uh, this video is a bit tough to understand. It's very difficult or it may be a bit complicated at times, but that is because leprosy is a complicated disease. There's a reason why it is still prevalent in our society after 18 years of elimination. And the reason behind that is that M. leprae is a very, uh, you could say it's a very adept microorganism and it can essentially manipulate our immune system to stay in our body for a prolonged period of time ranging in years. So with this video, we will attempt to understand how our body deals with an infection with M. leprae bacilli and how does M. M. leprae bacilli manipulates our lepros and immune system so that it remains in our body in somewhat of a secured state. Now we all know that M. leprae resides in the macrophages. Okay. And uh, uh, why our body is not able to kill the pathogen who is inside the macrophages is a very good story to understand. And this video might be a bit uh, difficult to listen in one go. So I decided to split uh, this video into two parts. The first part will deal with immunology of leprosy. That means the action that our body takes to handle an infection with M. leprae bacteria. Okay. While the second part will deal with how does M. leprae bacteria manipulate our immune system so that it can stay in our body for years. So slowly and slowly we will understand how does the immune system react to M. leprae and then we will understand how M. leprae reacts to the immune system. Clear? So uh, one essential point to understand or at least beginning begin to understand the immunology of leprosy or the, or the immune response to leprosy we must have few things clear. First of all I would request you to go back and see the video on pathomechanism of psoriasis it is a good refer uh, it is a it's a good refresher to know what what are the sequence of events in innate immunity and acquired immunity so that you may at least uh, try to have some idea that what are the functions of different types of cytokines okay so it's a good idea to go back and uh, see that video once again now one important concept to know is that in the tuberculoid pole and then you have the lepromatous pole so there are two different polar opposites uh, of the spectrum of leprosy infection you have the tuberculoid pole and the lepromatous pole and in between you have three intermediaries we have the borderline tuberculoid borderline lepromatous and in between a borderline borderline stage okay so tuberculoid leprosy is very different from lepromatous leprosy and we will discuss the immune responses in context of these two different polar opposites and in between you can see a gradual shift from TP to LP. Okay. Now in tuberculoid leprosy, the cellular immunity is very much active. And what do we mean by cellular immunity? That means majorly the T cells, the macrophages, the dendritic cells or the natural killer cells. You know, these kind of cells are more active and that is why they are able to kill the bacilli. Okay, and if the bacilli is killed, you, you will have a lower bacillary load and you will have the tuberculoid spectrum of the disease. But in lepromatous leprosy, you have more of humoral immunity. And what do we mean by humoral? Humoral means blood related. That means the immunity is majorly carried out by immunoglobulins or antibodies. Now what happens is that antibodies are not capable of killing the bacilli which is residing inside a cell because antibodies cannot cross a cellular membrane okay so if antibodies cannot cross and go inside the cell it cannot kill an any organism which is residing or living inside macrophages that is why in killing of leprosy the or the um, immunoglobulins don't play much role and the cellular mediated immunity or as we say as cmi the cellular mediated immunity is low in the lepromatous pole 
so the cells based immunity which is the t cells macrophage dendritic cells natural killer cells these are not much active in the lepromatospore and that is why the cell mediated killing of m leprae doesn't happen that much leading to a lot of bacilli in the system leading to a lot of bacilli being stored inside the macrophages and the disease presence as a lepromatospore so you can you you usually have more antibodies in the system of a patient who is dealing with lepromatous leprosy but that antibodies are incapable of destroying the m leprae bacilli and that is why more humoral immunity less cell mediated immunity in lepromatous leprosy and you will have more bacilli and less killing of bacilli while in the tuberculoid pole you will have more cell mediated immunity more killing of bacilli leading to less bacillary load and a restricted disease a possible bacillary or a, or a or a you could say uh, when bacillary load is less a possible bacillary mode of infection in tuberculoid leprosy okay so uh, with that understanding we'll start by the uh, immune mechanisms that are initiated with the infection of m leprae now first we'll understand what are the skin reactions in leprosy and this skin reactions are different from the lepra reactions okay so this is just how the skin reacts with m leprae bacilli so in 1954 mitsuda gave a mitsuda reaction so what is mitsuda reaction in that uh, in this reaction you give intradermal injection of killed m leprae and after the injection there is a granulomatous response in 3 to 4 weeks now remember from the pathophysiology of psoriasis that in order to form a granuloma this is a granuloma and granuloma is nothing but a collection of macrophages which have been modified into epithelial cells so that you can restrict the bacilli and store it so that it does not cause any harm okay so this is a granuloma a granuloma formation is by macrophages under the influence of tnf alpha and interferon gamma majorly th1 type of cytokines okay so what happens in mitsuda reaction is when you inject intradermally killed m leprae since the since the individual since the patient has a good cell mediated immunity it is able to cause a reaction against the injected m leprae and form a granulomatous response and since it takes time for the granuloma to form it takes about 3 to 4 weeks for the reaction to be seen and that is the mitsuda reaction okay now afterwards because of this long duration uh, another reaction was described by dharmendra that is known as dharmendra reaction and in dharmendra reaction what we do is we give intradermal injection of soluble protein derivative of the m bacilli the mycobacterial bacilli we give a protein derivative and you see a reaction 48 to 72 hours that means in 2 to 3 days okay and th this is a type of delayed hypersensitivity reaction to pathogen now what happens in dharmendra reaction so what you do is you inject a protein derivative just below the skin okay this is not the killed bacilli as in mitsuda reaction in dharmendra reaction you just inject a protein derivative and if your body has been infected by m leprae before your body recognizes the this this protein derivative and initiates a immune response against it and that immune response is of the delayed hypersensitivity type same mechanism that we see in monto test for tuberculosis and you see a response in 2 to 3 days clear now the big, bigger disadvantage is that these tests are not leprosy specific and you can have false positive reactions and also false negative reaction let's say if a person who is severely immunocompromised or uh, immunosuppressed you can have false negative reactions to leprosy also okay so now we have discussed the two major reaction mitsuda and dharmendra reaction so uh, with that point in mind we know that cell mediated immune damage is the major player in destroying m bacilli okay to destroy the d lepromatous uh, bacilli we must realize that cell cell players are the major major uh, cytokines uh, sorry cell lines that are going to destroy the bacilli with very less dependence on auto so immune mediated damage clear so let's uh, hear the story and see what happens when bacilli enters the body 
so here the m lepre comes okay this pardon my drawing imagine that as a uh, my colleague acid enriched m lepre bacilli so bacilli enters the body and when it enters the body it initiates a response okay so whenever an whenever an individual is infected by any pathogen the first immune arm that got activated is innate immunity okay and what is innate immunity innate immunity is majorly cell mediated and that includes your natural killer cells the dendritic cells and the macrophages okay so these cellular uh, cellular you could you could say cellular mechanisms these are in place against all pathogens in the nature and they are very non pathogen specific that means they are not directed against any particular pathogen they are going to uh, take care of any and every pathogen that will enter the body so when bacilli enters the body it initiates first the innate immunity and innate immunity includes the natural killer cells which are going to destroy any cells any human cells which are infected by m leprae then you have the dendritic cells and the macrophages now dendritic cell the, the function of dendritic cell is to engulf the uh, the destroyed parts of a cell, of a pathogen and then express it to t cells okay so here you have t cells and here you have b cells okay so what dendritic cell does it it takes a portion of the pathogen and express it or shows it that this is a part of pathogen that we are dealing with i want you to recognize that pathogen and initiate a good immune response okay that, that this is what dendritic cell is talking to t cell the macrophage does the same thing it's going to engulf the whole bacilli destroy it into in its lysosome and then express those particles along with mhc molecules okay along with mhc so if your t cells are uh, if you're going to uh, you know if you're going to express those parts of m leprae you use mhc class 2 mhc class 1 is present in all the uh, nucleated cells and that prevents the cellular damage to normal cells so what macrophage does it it engulf the bacteria okay it engulfs it eats the bacteria destroys the bacteria and along with mhc class 2 presents those bacilli to t cells so that the t cell can recognize and initiate a good immune response am i clear on that now after recognition of those bacilli parts by the t cell the t cell gets activated now the t cell is awake okay and its job is to destroy m leprae so what happens is that t cell is going to get modified into two different class let me just use a different pen so that you can see yeah so what happens is that t cell will either form an effector cd8 positive cell or a helper cd4 positive cell this is the th helper subtype and this is the t cell effector subtype okay so t cell going to modify into either the effector cd8 positive or helper cd4 positive helper cd4 positive will help to regulate the immune response okay regulate the immune response while effector cd8 positive t cell is the main cell line responsible for killing the bacilli so effector cd8 is going to kill the bacilli it is also going to kill the macrophage that has the bacilli not normal macrophages these are those macrophages that have the bacilli inside them so they will kill the macrophage along with the bacilli clear but if the immune response is very high it can also lead to collateral damage to surrounding areas or bystander damage to other structure and that is what you see in this skin lesions when they are in reaction or whether you see uh, uh, increase immune activity in reversal reaction that is because the t cell is causing damage to normal skin cells normal tissues also while destroying the macrophages that has the bacilli clear so we have effector and we have the effector and the helper t cell if the effect if the effector cd8 cell is able to kill the bacilli and macrophages that has the bacilli the disease will be restricted only to a certain area in the form of granulomas 
and you will have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy or tuberculoid leprosy and in tuberculoid leprosy you will have lymphocyte more than histiocyte remember what are histiocyte histiocyte is just a modification of macrophages okay and in tuberculoid pole the macrophages are dying so you will not see much of histiocytes you will see more of lymphocytes the t lymphocytes which are killing the macrophages so you will see see more of t lymphocyte and less of histiocyte but if effector cd8 positive cells are not able to kill the bacilli there's no damage and you get the lepromatous pole and in lepromatous pole you will see a lot of macrophages which have the bacilli inside them let me just draw yeah these are the bacilli inside them but the t cells are not able to kill them for whatever reasons that may be the t cells are not much in number and they're not able to kill the histiocytes and that is why you see more of histiocytes and less of t cells the sorry less of lymphocytes in lepromatous pole we are clear on that now we have discussed the uh, discussed the t lympho t cells now these t cells and b cells are a part of the acquired response now what happens is whenever any pathogen enters the body it starts the initiate uh, the in uh, innate response and while the innate response is happening parallelly the t cells and b cells are sensitized to the pathogen and then they become specific t cells and b cells against those pathogen if you want to kill the pathogen with a cell mediated immunity you have t cells if you want to kill with antibodies then you have b cells both of them get activated and since this activation is acquired because of infection by a particular pathogen that is known as the acquired response okay and in leprosy the major factor that can, that is the action of acquired response is through t cells now what happens with b cells the b cells get sensitized and create synthesize antibodies against m lepre or m lepre proteins so it's going to synthesize m lepre antibodies but since antibodies cannot cross the cell membrane they cannot kill the bacilli and you will see a lot of antibodies in the blood of the patient with lepromatous pole but the bacilli will still remain alive because it is hiding inside macrophages clear we are we are clear on that so let's move forward so now we know that how how does the m lepre infection activates the different arms of immune system we know what it does to the innate immunity we know what it does to the acquired immunity now in subsequent slides we will understand that what do specific cell subtypes uh, do in presence of m lepre okay so when m lepre gets inside the body what is the function of different different cell types of innate immunity and what is the what are the changes that these cell lines go through so uh, the innate immunity is the initial response to a pathogen entry it is fast because it is non pathogen specific it doesn't mind what pathogen uh, is entering the body it it just starts the process of an immune mediated control of pathogen clear now the exact role is very difficult to understand in m lepre because of the long incubation period of the bacilli so incubation period can be very 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 long and uh, one one good uh, data point to add here is we have the doubling time doubling time of m lepre doubling time of m lepre ranges from 10 to 14 days however hastings mention it as 13 days so if you want to answer a bit more specifically it's 13 days otherwise it ranges from 10 to 14 days in comparison to m tuberculosis the doubling time is about 20 hours and in spite of doubling time of 20 hours the m tubercular bacteria takes a lot of time to grow that is why in lj media in lowenstein genstein media it takes about 6 to 8 weeks for the culture report to come okay and m lepre is a lot lot slower growing bacilli and that is why the incubation period that means the point of infection till the point of first appearance of clinical sign is very long it can it ranges from years okay so in case of multi bacillary load it can be uh, for within 4 years in multi bacillary form of leprosy 
while in passive bacillary it can be as long as 10 years so when the bacillary load is less it can take about 10 years for the first clinical signs to develop while in multi bacillary it can take 4 years okay so what happens is it let's discuss in steps first will be the entry of bacilli inside the body and then it will be the antigen presentation with macrophages and antigen presentation with dendritic cells so let's move forward and see what is the function of innate immunity with m leprae starting from the first step which is the entry of bacilli inside the system now let's in very very short we'll just understand the structure uh, in the future i might make another video on the structure and biology of m leprae that is very interesting to know uh, what are the structures of m leprae but just uh, a very brief that you have a double layered cell wall okay you have a double layered cell wall and then you have the cell membrane in the outer membrane of cell wall you have pgl1 phosphoglycolipid 1 while the inner has more of mycolic acid we know that it is mycobacteria myco that is why it has a lot of mycolic acid so pgl1 is very important molecule you're going to hear about it a lot while discussing leprosy basically more in the diagnosis of leprosy okay so let's move forward with this knowledge we'll move forward to the entry of bacilli in the body now the macrophages have various receptors on the surface we have c receptor 1 c receptor 2 and c receptor 4 these are cellular receptors and by the action of these receptors the phosphoglycolipid 1 attaches itself to these receptors and you utilizing these receptors it gets inside the macrophages okay so you, here you have a macrophage and here you have let's say cr3 and this is the m leprae and here is the pgl1 these thing these two things get attached and macrophage engulfs the bacilli and now the bacilli is inside the macrophage okay this is known as internalization or or interiorization of bacilli get taking the bacilli inside okay now uh, this is the phenolic glycolipid one it's m leprae specific cell wall lipid this is recognized by the cr3 molecule and it leads to interiorization of bacilli with the same mechanism, the M. leprae infects the Schwann cells around the nerves and that is why you have the next organ involvement which is nerves. So it involves skin and nerves. That is how the infection starts. Now some genes we will discuss here. The most important one as of now is natural resistance associated macrophage protein 1 or NRAMP. Just remember these names. You can easily write short notes on the genetic uh, mutations or genetic basis of leprosy infection. So you have the natural resistance associated macrophage protein. And what is the function of NRAM? The function of NRAM is to accumulate iron inside macrophages. Okay. And iron is a good micronutrient for bacilli to propagate, to survive, to multiply. So if I am a bacilli and I am now residing inside a macrophage, I need those iron stores. So what happens is by the mutation of NRAM, if there is a gene, if there is a person who has a genetic mutation in NRAM1, it will try to accumulate a lot of iron inside the macrophage and those iron will then be utilized by M. leprae for viability and multiplicity. Okay, so iron is transported inside the phagolysosome of the macrophage and the mutation will lead to increased viability and multiplicity of bacilli. And this gene has been localized to chromosome 2. There are further studies going on regarding the, uh, the uh, specific action of NRAMP in M. leprae, but it is now one of the implicated genes as of now till further research shows us better. Now, another gene is PARC2 or PACRG1. I think I don't remember the full form, but I think it is uh, Pox virus anaphase control receptor uh, gene. And it regulates the proteasome pathway. Now, what is proteasome pathway? All the proteins inside the cell wall, which are not useful for the cell, you need to destroy those proteins. And that proteins are destroyed by the process of ubiquitin. 
so what happens is you attach a lot of molecules uh, uh, different molecules to those useless proteins and the cell organelle recognizes those uh, attachments and then destroys the protein okay so this the mutation of these two genes are implicated in parkinson's disease but recent study shows that majorly in the vietnamese population it has been shown that people with mutation in the PARC2 or PACR gene mutation have an increased susceptibility to leprosy infection and disease. Okay, so these are some of the genes which are implicated. Along with that, one gene that I can mention is vitamin D receptor mutation. So vitamin D is a very important molecule to, for immune modulation. And when the gene gets uh, mutated, you are not able to have a good immune response. And that is why it can lead to increased infestation by M. leprae. So these are some genes which you just have to remember the most important being the phenolic glycolipid one and then you can easily write a genetic basis of uh, M. leprae infection. Now let's understand what happens when M. leprae is inside the bacilli. So what is happens is we'll deal with TLR. TLR is tall like receptor. So this is tall like receptors so there are a lot of receptors i think there are nine receptors nine tall like receptor the major one is tall like receptor two and three now these receptors are, are responsible for recognition of pathogens so tall like receptor four and two they're going to recognize the mycobacteria and internalize it and uh, after internalization it will lead to formation of interleukin 12 and interleukin 12 is an inflammatory cytokine what do we mean by that that means that the production of interleukin 12 is going to increase the inflammatory response to pathogen okay so pathogen has entered the macrophages now and the macrophages are initiating an il12 response and il12 response is going to secrete interferon gamma which is a th1 cytokine Okay, so interferon gamma is increased in the presence of interleukin 12 and a Th1 cytokine is going to lead to bacillary clearance that means destruction of bacilli. This we are talking about in the context of tuberculoid leprosy. Okay, what do we mean by tuberculoid leprosy? That means the individual has a good cell mediated immunity and the individual is going to kill the M. leprae okay so this is a normal response this is not lepromatous leprosy when you have a bit of hacking of immune system okay so the bacilli enters the macrophages get recognized by tall leg receptors 4 and 2 it leads to formation of interleukin 12 which is an inflammatory cytokine interleukin 12 is going to secrete interferon gamma which is a th1 cytokine and in the presence of tnf sorry in the presence of interferon gamma you will have granuloma formation remember the first slide of this presentation that interferon gamma and TNF alpha are responsible for granuloma formation. And what happens in leprosy when granulomas are formed? Tuberculoid pole. Okay, so you have more of tuberculoid leprosy when granulomas are formed. So you have increased interferon gamma, increased bacillary clearance. Okay, interferon gamma along with granulocyte and monocyte colonies, colony stimulating factor or GMCF increases tall like receptor 1. And under the action of increased tall leg receptor 1, you have TNF alpha. And what does TNF alpha do? It's going to form the granuloma. So now you understand that a granuloma is going to form by the action of interferon gamma and the action of TNF alpha and the bacilli is going to reside inside the granuloma and is not going to trouble the individual and you will have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy where the bacilli is sequestered inside the granuloma. Clear? The body has now handled the M. leprae bacilli. Now what happens is in the presence of phenolic glycolipid 1, there is secretion of interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 10 which are anti-inflammatory. Now what do we mean by anti-inflammatory? Anti-inflammatory means that they are going to decrease the immune response of the body against M. leprae. 
and why does m leprae want to decrease the immune system because it wants to survive inside the macrophage that is why it does not want a good granuloma formation it does not want the macrophages to kill them it does not want the body to kill the macrophages that are hosting the bacilli but m leprae wants macrophages to come to the site of infection okay so if i am m leprae bacilli i want to infect the macrophages i want the macrophages to come to me so that i can infect them but i don't want the macrophage to kill me or i don't want the body to kill those macrophages okay so you have the anti inflammatory cytokines 1 beta and 10 it also increases the monocytic chemoattractant protein so chemoattractant means a chemical that attracts inflammatory cells chemoattractant and monocytic means it's going to attract monocytes so i'm calling the cells at the site of infection so that i can infect them as an m leprae okay so what for pgl does is that it uh, it increases tnf alpha but very slowly okay and this slow release is not enough to cause a good granuloma formation so for granuloma formation you need a rapid increase of tnf alpha so that the bacilli are stored quickly and they are not able to spread inside the body but pgl1 decreases this immune response decreases the speed of this immune response and that is why you don't have uh, much granuloma formation in uh, leprosy and the disease stays in tuberculoid pool Now, 19 kilo dalton and 33 kilo dalton protein also inhibits the Tau like receptor 4 and 2 activation, and because these are uh, decreased by these proteins, the mycobacteria are not recognized very easily, and they are able to survive inside the macrophages. These proteins are the uh, M leprae proteins. These proteins come from the leprosy bacilli, and that is how the leprosy bacilli is going to reside and stay safely inside the macrophage. now let's look at the uh, the next uh, hero of our story the macrophages so what macrophages uh, do is they're going to eat the m leprae bacilli and under normal circumstances kill those bacilli or themselves get killed by the immune cells so that the m leprae bacilli is not able to propagate inside the body so macrophages have a c type lectin receptor on the cell surface and this receptor recognizes the manos capped lipoarabinomenin it's a very long name don't worry manos capped lipoarabinomenin which is present on m tuberculosis and m leprae so when c type lectin recognizes that that lipoarabinomenin it leads to engulf of the bacilli engulfing the bacilli inside the macrophages okay so i am let's say this time i am the macrophage i want to recognize m leprae i have c type lectin receptor the m leprae has lipoarabinomenin and i recognizes that lipoarabinomenin and because of recognition i am going to internalize the m leprae clear after internalization of m leprae four things happen one is phagocytosis that means we i am going to eat the m leprae next is prostaglandin e2 increase nitrous oxide and uh, no system increase and tnf alpha increase now what are the functions phagocytosis that means eat the bacilli kill the bacilli prostaglandin is going to increase the inflammatory recruitment inflammatory recruitment that means i am calling other cells towards me no is reactive uh, damage to the bacilli so kill bacilli using the nitrogen mediated killing killing of m lepre and tnf alpha means inflammation remember the psoriasis video that tnf alpha is is the main mediator of the inflammatory cascade so all the inflammation is going to happen all the cells neutrophils monocytes macrophages t cells b cells they are all going to come at the site of infection and try to kill m lepre okay additional information is that interleukin 15 is going to decrease the phagocytosis while interleukin 10 is going to increase phagocytosis so that we are able to control the infection at the site of infection and interleukin 10 is also implicated in vitamin d induced antimicrobicidal activity so that is also increase in the presence of interleukin 10 we are clear macrophage recognizes m leprae takes it inside Post four things happen: phagocytosis, eat the bacteria; PGE2, increase inflammatory recruitment; NO induced damage of bacilli; and increased TNF alpha. 
leading to inflammation. Let's move forward. So what happens is that macrophage, if it if this presence of interferon gamma, and remember what is interferon gamma, the Th1 cytokine. So in the presence of interferon gamma, it forms the M1 phenotype of macrophage. What do we, what do we mean by M1? There are two types, M1 and M2. M1 and M2, and M2 is in the Th2 phenotype. Now first let's let us discuss the Th1 phenotype. Okay, we'll discuss. Uh, sorry, we'll put a barrier here. So macrophage under the influence of interferon gamma converts itself into M1 phenotype. Now what M1 phenotype is, it's going to stimulate the endothelial cells. Endothelial cells means the vessel wall endothelial cell. And it's going to recruit a lot of inflammatory cells towards the site of infection so that all the cells together can kill M. bacilli. So it is more of an inflammatory damage inducing type of macrophage. So macrophage M1 phenotype is inflammatory damage inducing number one. It is also implicated to vitamin D dependent antimicrobial activity. That's number two. So when you have more of M1 type as compared to M2 type, you will have the Th1 response and Th1 response means you will have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy. Let me write it again. You will have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy. So more M1 than M2, tuberculoid pole. The reverse happens in Th2 type of response. So in the presence of interleukin-4, which is a type of Th2 cytokine, the macrophage gets converted into an M2 type. And M2 type is a part of Th2 response and Th2 response is seen in lepromatous leprosy. So what is lepromatous leprosy? Not much inflammation, the bacilli is not going to die, so it is anti-inflammatory. So M2 is anti-inflammatory, there is not much inflammation. There is increased phagocytosis. Why there is increased phagocytosis? Because in lepromatous pole, M. leprae wants to reside inside the macrophage but do not does not want to die. So the phagocytosis increase but the killing is not increased. Okay. Other things which is increased in interleukin 10 which I have already told you is an anti-inflammatory cytokine. So there is not much inflammation but increase engulfing of bacilli in the Th2 response leading to lepromatous pole of leprosy. So more M2 than M1 means lepromatous pole. We are clear on that. Okay, so when you have M1 more than M2, you have the tuberculoid pole and when M2 is more than M1, you have lepromatous pole. In tuberculoid pole, the galactin is absent and galactin is responsible for decreasing the T-cell activation. So when galactin is absent, you have increased T-cell activation. Sorry, when galactin is absent, you have increased T-cell activation. More T-cell activation leads to more inflammation and more inflammation leads to cell death. Not cell death, bacilli death. Or you can say M. lepre death. Okay. In tuberculoid pole, there is decreased iron storage. Remember when we were discussing the N-ramp gene? N-ramp is responsible for storing iron inside the macrophages but in tuberculoid pole the iron storage is decreased and that is why the bacilli doesn't have access to more iron and it dies. Not dies, not able to survive that effectively in the absence of iron micronutrient. Okay, there is increase or normal ferroportin. Now what is ferroportin? You have a macrophage you have small molecule which is known as ferroportin and the action, the function of ferroportin is to export iron. Export iron means removal of iron from the system. Export iron. So ferroportin is going to transport iron from inside the cell to outside cell. Clear? So there is normal or increased ferroportin that means all the iron store inside the macrophages is thrown out. There is not much iron inside the cell, not much iron to be used by M. leprae, M. leprae is not able to survive. Clear? Let's focus on the lepromatous pole. You have more M2 type of macrophage as compared to M1 lepromatous pole. The galactin 3 is present and because of presence of galactin 3 there is decreased T cell activation that means no inflammation or rather less inflammation. There is increased interleukin 27, 
इंटरलुकिन या इंक्रीज इंटरलुकिन 27 लीडिंग टू इंटरफेरॉन गामा एंड इंटरलुकिन 10 एंड इंटरलुकिन 10 बीइंग एन एंटी इंफ्लेमेटरी साइटोकाइन देयर इज लेस रिस्पांस लेस इंफ्लेमेटरी रिस्पांस टू एम बैसिली सो द बैसिली गोस इनसाइड द मैक्रोफाज एंड स्टेज देयर रेंट फ्री ओके देयर इज इंक्रीज आयरन स्टोरेज इनसाइड द मैक्रोफाज एज वी हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू बिकॉज़ ऑफ एन रैम यू विल हैव इंक्रीज आयरन इनसाइड द मैक्रोफाज there is increased to normal uh, this should not be increased this decreased to normal ferroportin let me just yeah let me just write it again there is decreased to normal ferroportin and uh, because of that you will have a decreased iron export now what happens is that when ferroportin is increased you will have more export of iron outside the cell iron will be thrown out okay but in lepromatous pole the ferroportin can be normal or decreased and because of decreased ferroportin iron is not able to be thrown out iron gets accumulated inside the macrophages so in lepromatous pole you have the macrophage and you will have a lot of iron inside it why because you are storing it more because of nram and you are not able to remove it because of decreased ferroportin and because of that you will have a lot of iron m leprae uses iron to grow and survive clear let's move forward now the dendritic cells dendritic cells are antigen presenting cells so you have this kind of dendritic cell and these are antigen presenting cells that means they will engulf bacteria or parts of bacteria and then present some molecules on the surface from the bacilli so that the t cells can recognize them and kill or start the immune acquired immune response clear now c type lectin which have we have already we have already discussed c type lectin on macrophage the same type of lectins is present on dendritic cells and because of those lectin the dendritic cells are able to internalize the m leprae or the parts of m leprae now one important point to understand is dc sign what is dc sign it is dendritic cell specific intracellular adhesion molecule 3 grabbing non integrin very big name very difficult to remember but if you keep on repeating you will be able to easily memorize it so it is dendritic cell specific intracellular adhesion molecule 3 non integrin type it is also known as cd209 okay and because of presence of dc sign there is internalization of m leprae so what happens is this is this is an adhesion molecule adhesion molecule means it will help in attachment of m leprae to the cell wall sorry to the cell membrane and when the m leprae gets attached to cell membrane it will lead to internalization of m leprae okay it increases interleukin 10 when we say it it means dendritic cell and what interleukin 10 is it's anti inflammatory okay and anti inflammatory is going to decrease the d cell uh, activation okay so let me just recapitulate what has happened dendritic cell will recognize the m leprae and present the particles of m leprae to t cells so that t cell can initiate a good response a normal tuberculoid leprosy will initiate interferon gamma tnf alpha form granulomas and sequester the, the infection or control the infection while in the lepromatous pole the dendritic cell will internalize it internalize the m leprae lead to secretion of interleukin 10 and under the action of interleukin 10 there will be less activation of dendritic cell that means the dendritic cell doesn't want to present that effectively the m leprae to t cell and the if and the t cell immediated immune response does not start we are clear on that and that is how the bacilli is going to survive in the lepromatous pole so cd209 or the dc sign okay this is dc sign is stimulated by m leprae which leads to formation of interleukin 10 which is anti inflammatory this leads to internalization of m leprae destruction of m leprae pgl1 expression and then t cell immunity blockade that means that under the action of m leprae the dendritic cells secrete interleukin 10 and because of interleukin 10 the inflammatory response is decreased and 
the immunity blocked by the T cell is present. Okay, so dendritic cells are not able to uh, express the uh, molecules to T cells, and that is why the T cell mediated immune damage doesn't happen. Okay, now there are there is a certain subset of dendritic cell known as CD1 a positive, which increases the antigen presentation to T cells. So when this antigen presentation is increased. or when the cd1 a positive subset of dendritic cell is increased you have the tuberculoid pole why there is more antigen presentation there is more t cell activation and because of more t cell activation there is more immune mediated damage immune damage or the th1 phenotype and you have the tuberculoid leprosy while when the cd1 a positive dendritic cells are decreased it's more of a lepromatous pole why there will be less antigen presentation less t cell activation less immune mediated damage the bacilli is going to survive inside the macrophages and you have lepromatous pole clear another thing is indio sorry it will i will take few seconds to uh, pronounce this long name yeah so indolimin indolimin indoli of oh, is becoming a bit tougher indoliamine 23 dioxygenase i'm going to call it as id okay see if you're not able to pronounce anything during vivas don't worry just say what you want to say the examiner will know that what you mean don't worry it's okay it happens people will be nervous although i am not nervous but this is this is, there are some words which i cannot pronounce that effectively so indolamine 23 dioxygenase this is a molecule which is induced by interferon gamma is responsible for granuloma formation and it is increased in the lepromatous pole and decrease in the uh, tuberculoid pole okay so when the tuber in tuberculoid pole the expression of indolamine dioxygenase is induced by interferon gamma and it decreases the granuloma formation leading to a tuberculoid pole of leprosy while the there's increase in lepromatous pole and there's there is a less sequestration of m leprae so let me just explain to you again what is the action of indolamine okay so uh, let me just explain to you again what is indolamine 23 dioxygenase action so this is responsible for decreasing the immune response decreasing the immune response now under the presence of interferon gamma and m lepre the ido synthesis is increased the indolamine dioxygenase system is increased and when it is increased it will lead to immune response decrease okay so if i have to explain the action of indolamine 23 dioxygenase in very short manner i will say that interferon gamma along with m lepre increases ido which leads to decrease immune response which leads to lepromatous pole of leprosy okay so if ido is increased it will lead to lepromatous pole if ido is decrease it will lead to tuberculoid pole clear let's move forward now keratinocytes these are we'll just finish it in like 1 minute or so what is icam icam is intercellular adhesion molecule and this molecule is present in the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and it is responsible for migration of inflammatory cells so what happens is then icam expression increases in the keratinocytes and because of uh, sorry in, uh, keratinocytes lead to increase expression of icam1 on endothelial cells and because of increase expression of icam1 more inflammatory cells are uh, are uh, recruited to the site of the skin infection and because now there are more inflammatory cells there it can get infected by m lepre okay and this kind this icam1 expression is decreased by thalidomide so that is why the inflammation is decreased by thalidomide so inflammation is decreased by thalidomide and that is why thalidomide is a good uh, action or a good drug in type 2 reaction the enl so that you don't want neutrophils to come in enl so you can give thalidomide okay now catelicidin and microbial peptides 
by the same mechanism go back and see the video on psoriasis and the inflammatory pathogenesis and you will realize that these kind of antimicrobial peptides are decreased so that is why not much antigen presentation happens and the response or the uh, m leprae immune specific immune responses decrease so m leprae is able to survive m leprae stimulates beta defensin which is another type of antimicrobial peptides and this stimulation this increase in beta defensin can be reversed by steroids and that is why steroids are good drug in lepra reaction so these are good drugs in lepra reaction because it decreases the immune uh, mediated recruitment by beta defensin in tubercular pole there is increased interferon gamma cxcl10 which is beta chemo attractant responsible for t cell migration by in tuberculoid pole we want the t cells to come and kill the bacilli so t cell migration is going to be increased because of keratinocytes in lepromatous pole there is no such stimulation is seen there is no production of interferon gamma no cxcl10 or less cxcl10 or whatever the less number of inflammatory cells are present and that is why immune mediated damage doesn't happen the t cell mediated damage to m leprae doesn't happen in lepromatous pole now schwann cells schwann cells as we know are uh, have the same function as macrophages but in the neural system so we know that m leprae in damages the non myelinating fibers more than the myelinating ones and what do we mean by m leprae induced damage m leprae is going to increase reactive oxygen species and when ros is increased the ros mediated damage happens to nerve cells and that leads to neural damage nerve damage it stimulates the conversion of schwann cells to progenitor stem cell like cells for example you have a stem cell which eventually will form a schwann cell and a normal schwann cell will kill the bacilli normally but in the presence of m leprae the reversal happens and schwann cell becomes more like a progenitor stem cell like cell and is not able to carry its mature function of killing the bacilli it increases toll like receptor 2 and we have already told, told you that increased toll like receptor 2 is going to lead to inflammatory response with interferon gamma and because of that a granuloma will form and a granuloma formation that is why we see the perineural sorry when this is a cross section of nerve and we see the perineural infestation by the bacilli or macrophage infestation inside the nerve because of TL, tlr2 activation it increases tnf alpha tnf alpha uh, again will lead to formation of granulomas it increases matrix metalloproteinases 2 and 9 these are for immune modulation it increases ccl2 ccl2 leads to macrophage recruitment and fibrosis leading to further nerve damage so it damages the nerve by multiple mechanism one mechanism is immune mediated damage another mechanism is that the um, m leprae directly infiltrates the nerve other mechanism is that it leads to fibrosis of nerves another mechanism it, it leads to granuloma formation and physical compression of nerves there are multiple methods of neural damage there is an entirely different separate chapter on mechanism of nerve damage in ial book so we can read maybe in future i'll put another video but we can read that chapter in ial okay lipoarabinomelanin in the m leprae leads to c3 and mac what is mac mac is membrane attack complex membrane attack complex it is a complex of various complement proteins and what happens is if you have a cell mac gets attached to a cell membrane and leads to leakage of cellular contents and the cell dies so this is a membrane attack complex membrane attack complex and lipoarabinomelanin leads to increase opsonin c3 what is opsonin c3 opsonin or opsonization means to make a bacteria tasty okay so a bacilli is going to coat itself with c3 so that the, it becomes tasty to phagocytosis and it's and the, cell, the immune cells are able to kill the bacilli so that is opsonization membrane attack complex is complement mediated damage so you have complement mediated damage to nerve cells also pgl1 interacts with myelinating glia the glial cells which are of the myelinating fiber leading to no induction and then a demyelination that means pgl1 interaction with a myelinating fiber 
can convert to a demyelinated one and we all know that the demyelinating fibers are slow acting slow progressing fibers that will lead to further neural damage so in this slide okay i'll just remove uh, this bigger diagram so that you can take a screenshot and see that i have listed nearly all the methods how m lepre is going to damage the nerves and this i'm talking about uh, you know molecules and uh, pathomechanisms of nerve damage i'm not talking about the processes the processes are a bit different so this is way of causing neural damage with m lepre clear let's move forward now neutrophils we'll quickly uh, complete that neutrophils are more important in erythema nodosum leprosum or the type 2 reaction it increases e cell uh, see what what do we mean by uh, neutrophil migration the m lepre is going to increase e selectin and e selectin is same in function as icam1 different molecule but the function is same it leads to increased migration of neutrophils at the site and that is why you have increased neutrophils in enl there is increased inflammatory damage due to increased il8 and tnf alpha this we are talking about newts so neutrophils increases the inflammatory damage it increases the apoptotic rate as compared to lepromatous pool and healthy people. That means that newts have a tendency to, to die or to increase the cell death in the, in the lepromatous pool so that it leads to ENL type of reaction in lepromatous pool. Okay. CD64 or cluster differentiation 64 factors is increased during ENL leading to inflammatory damage and this CD64 is decreased by thalidomide that is why thalidomide is one of the best drugs in ENL. It decreases this neutrophil migration along with decreasing ICAM1 expression so the inflammatory cells are reduced, the neutrophils are reduced and ENL is taken care of. That is why we use thalidomide in ENL. Okay? Neutrophils also secrete pentaxin 3 and pentaxin 3 is responsible for more neutrophil migration leading to more inflammation. So I am just naming you one more molecule which is increased in ENL. So pentaxin 3 is increased in ENL leading to more neutrophils, more newts and leading to more inflammatory damage. Clear? And this is the role of neutrophils in M. lepre. It is more important in ENL or type 2. E selectin because of migration, increase inflammatory damage, increase apoptotic rate, increase CD64 in ENL is responsible for neutrophil migration that is decreased by thalidomide. Neutrophils also secrete pentaxin 3 which is exclusively expressed in ENL so that there is more neutrophils and more inflammatory damage. Now I think this is the last slide, the acquired immunity. And we have already told that it has minimal role in infection. Minimal role in infection. Why? Because antibodies which are formed in the acquired immunity, they are not able to cross and go inside the cell and kill M. leprae. So in lepromatous pole, the leprosy specific immune response is impaired. B cells are activated. They do form antibodies, but antibodies are not effective. They do not show good response. So these antibodies, even if they are not able to kill lepre, they are increased in the blood of the individual who is suffering from lepromatous pool. So you can detect these antibodies and find out whether the patient has been infected with M. bacilli or not. That is why the function is more in diagnosis of leprosy, but not as an immune mediated damage to M. lepre. Clear? So leprosy and these are antibodies. Leprosy antigen presentation to macrophagian T cells that is the function of these antibodies so that they can present those antigens. But their main role is in diagnosis of disease or clinical complications like we see immune cell mediated sorry immune complex mediated damage in uh, type 2 reactions. So immune mediated tissue reaction majorly the type 2 or the ENL1 and that th these are the areas where the antibodies are implicated. We also have CD8 positive effector cells which we have already discussed in previous slides how those effector cells are able to kill the bacilli in tuberculoid pole but if they are not able to kill it and there is not much damage you have the lepromatous pole. Clear? So again in lepromatous pole you have increased interleukin 10 and in tuberculoid pole you have increased interferon gamma for the granuloma formation.
so with that we have finished the first part of immune immunology of leprosy that means how does the body react to a lep to leprosy infection uh, one interesting thing that you might have noticed that while you are dealing with patients of leprosy you will find that some patient will develop directly the lepromatous pole or subpolar lepromatous leprosy while some patients are going to be at bt end or uh, tuberculoid type of leprosy and that is not because the amount of bacilli they have been infected with is more or less respectively it's because the host mechanism the host organism is not able to initiate a good cell mediated immunity if it's are able to initiate a good cell mediated immunity you have the tuberculoid pole if not then you have the lepromatous pole and why a patient is not able to induce a good cell mediated immunity there are multiple factors we have discussed genes which can get mutated we have discussed how m lepre manipulates the leprosy uh, sorry uh, manipulates immune system we will discuss that in detail in the part 2 of the video which is the immune manipulation leprosy or how does m lepre is going to manipulate so that it leads to an unresponsive immune system and m lepre is survive uh, uh, survives inside the body clear uh, so we'll take a short break uh, it's a very difficult video to understand in one go that's why i wanted to split into two parts so that once and for all we are able to understand what is the immune system action against m lepre and in the next part of the video we'll discuss what is the action of m lepre on the immune system so till then if you have any doubts suggestions or queries just let me know in the comment section i'll try to shoot the video for part 2 and release both of them uh, close together so that you can listen to them one go they are they are very long videos but trust me if you go through these videos once you will have a somewhat of a clear understanding what do we mean by immunology of leprosy and how does the immune manipulation or the immune system action takes place against m lepre till then take a short break have a good amount of coffee and adios i'll see you in part 2 where we will discuss immune manipulation in leprosy bye bye